We already know that the hair follicle needs oxygen and nutrients from the blood to grow. Without it, the hair becomes weak, lifeless, and starts to miniaturize. And we know that balding scalps have lower blood flow. So in today's video, we're looking at the top five treatments that are proven to boost blood flow. Okay, let's dive in and take a look. First up is minoxidil. So minoxidil was originally approved by the FDA as an oral medication against high blood pressure. Imagine the blood in your veins like water flowing through a pipe. The wider the pipe, the more water can pass through. And that's exactly how minoxidil works. It widens the blood vessels, allowing more blood to flow through and relieving the pressure, hence why it was a high blood pressure medication. When taken orally, it can grow hair not only on the head, but more or less any parts of the body, arms, legs, chest, back, you name it. Unfortunately, it can also cause heart complications when you take it orally. And it's for this reason that the topical version was developed for hair loss. By applying it directly to the scalp, you stimulate blood flow where needed, largely avoiding systemic absorption. Studies find that the boost in blood flow begins around 15 minutes after application, peaking around the hour mark and then petering off for about half an hour after that. At its peak, studies have shown that this can lead to a threefold increase in blood flow in the scalp. The effect is strongest with the 5% solution, which is also the one that generally gives the best hairy growth results. The fact that this effect is so short-lived is probably why most versions need to be applied twice daily in order to be most effective. Okay, next up is microneedling. Ask any expert in the field of hair loss to name, say, the top three or four most important developments in the past 15 years, and microneedling is almost certain to be one of them. It involves making hundreds of thousands of tiny pricks into the scalp skin using a specialized device like a derma roller or derma stamp. You don't need a prescription to get one of these devices, and it's also typically self-administered at home. Importantly, the small wounds that these devices make are typically small enough that they do not cause any sort of scarring, but they are sufficient enough to stimulate the skin's natural regeneration mechanisms that release the growth factors. Microneedling was invented around the turn of the century to treat scars originally. But starting in the early 2010s, it has grown to become a popular hair loss treatment. And when combined with topical minoxidil, it can typically increase the effectiveness more than three times. This makes the minoxidil microneedling combination one of the most effective treatments available. But even on its own, without minoxidil, Microneedling can be effective, probably on par with finasteride. Sessions are typically once a week for the first few months, dropping to once every two to four weeks in the maintenance phase. Now, unlike minoxidil, the regrowth that you get from microneedling is not because of what happens during the session. It's actually from biochemical processes that kick in in between sessions whilst the scalp is recovering. And chief among these is the stimulation of a protein called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF for short. VEGF is a signaling protein that the cells release to encourage the formation of blood vessels in their surrounding tissues. The result is richer vascularization and an increase in the supply of blood to the hair follicles. Microneedling is also thought to help break down fibrosis in the balding scalp. You see, one of the hallmarks of baldness is the gradual replacement of the healthy tissue that surrounds the hair follicles with microscopic scar tissue. Scientists call this fibrosis. The fibrosis literally chokes out the hair follicle partly by restricting the supply of blood to the hair follicle bulb. So by breaking down fibrosis, microneedling restores the supply of blood and gives the hair follicles vital space so that they can begin growing once again. This is why hair follicle miniaturization is a hallmark of male pattern baldness. The hair follicle slowly miniaturizes due to that fibrotic process limiting its space. Okay, third up on today's list is a classic herbal treatment with a long history that goes back at least to the Romans and Greeks. Peppermint essential oil is made from the leaves of spearmint and watermint plants. A 2014 study out of Korea found that topical peppermint oil was superior to minoxidil in regrowing hair 
on rats. Its mechanism of action appears to be the rapid induction of the anagen growth phase of the hair growth cycle when the hair shaft is actively growing. While to date, the animal studies have not been replicated in humans, peppermint oil has some anecdotal benefits in humans. Although to be honest, it's unlikely to be very effective at all as a standalone treatment. And it's very unlikely to be more effective than minoxidil, but there are probably still some small benefits. It would be better to use it in combination with other treatments, like adding just a few drops to a minoxidil solution. But whatever you do, do not apply undiluted peppermint oil to the scalp as its high potency will irritate your skin. The main component though of peppermint oil is menthol, which is known to increase blood flow to the skin when applied topically. So just another data point that shows improved blood flow likely does boost hair growth. Fourth up is a comparatively new treatment. So around the same time that the first publications on microneedling for hair loss were appearing, a pair of doctors out of Canada came up with a revolutionary idea. For decades, cosmetic surgeons had been injecting Botox into the faces of their patients in order to smooth out wrinkles. So if you didn't know, Botox works by blocking the nerve endings of the muscles, thus basically paralyzing them and causing them to relax. And that's why it helps to reduce wrinkles. So the doctors from Canada took this idea and decided to inject it into the scalps of their balding patients. The starting point was the fact that balding scalps are generally tense and chronically so. This chronic tension affects the supply of blood entering into the top of the scalp. By injecting Botox around the scalp, the doctors hoped to loosen it and thereby restore good blood flow. And their results were astonishing. They administered two Botox sessions to each of their 40 balding patients, and 75% of them had a positive response to the treatment. In some cases, like in these photos, the response was dramatic, extensive hair regrowth. Keep in mind that this was accomplished with just two Botox sessions and absolutely nothing else. In the researcher's own words, quote, the scalp behaves like a drum skin with tensioning muscles around the periphery. These muscle groups can create a tight scalp when chronically active. Because the blood supply to the scalp enters through the periphery, a reduction in blood flow would be most apparent at the distal ends of the vessels, specifically the vertex and frontal peaks. Conceptually, Botox loosens the scalp, reducing pressure on the perforating vasculature, thereby increasing blood flow and oxygen concentration. In the 15 years since this groundbreaking study, we've had a number of follow-up studies on Botox's effectiveness, and it's now extremely clear that it does work. We found out from the studies, for example, that it can be effective even after one session and at even much lower doses than the original study. It's also an excellent base to combine with other more traditional treatments like finasteride or another oral DHT blocker. Having said that, it does have a couple of major drawbacks. Firstly, sessions must be done in the doctor's office. And secondly, this can come with a price tag of up to a few thousand dollars, depending on where you live. For this reason, it simply hasn't become as popular as other treatment options and is rarely discussed nowadays, aside from when it comes to the actual mechanism of its action. This brings us nicely to the last and final treatment for today. They say that the best solutions to a problem are often the most simple ones. And when it comes to restoring blood flow to the scalp, no other method has a history as long and established as massages. Just like Botox, it also loosens the muscles and boosts blood flow, allowing the follicles to regenerate. But unlike Botox, it can be done in the privacy of your own home and it's completely free. A study published a few years ago looked at 340 people who were treating their hair loss by massaging their scalps at home. 69% of these people reported that they had regrown hair or at a minimum stabilized their hair loss. To achieve this result, they had to massage their scalp for an average of 36 hours. Apart from restoring blood flow, mechanical stimulation of the scalp has been found to affect the expression of genes in the follicles that regulate the hair growth cycle. The result of this effect is that hairs grow out longer and thicker as one Japanese study showed. Now, massaging your scalp for something like 36 hours can obviously get very tedious, even if these hours are spread out over months. And this is the main reason that most people lose out on the benefits of massage 
they just don't do it consistently and for enough cumulative hours. And this is where a device called the Grow Band comes in. The Grow Band is specifically designed for men with hair loss to help restore blood flow and reduce muscular tension around the scalp. A study was done on the Grow Band that showed blood flow in the dermis improved during and after using it as you can see in this chart. So here's how it works. The main part of the grow band resembles a ring that's placed around the scalp and is adjusted until it fits nice and snug. The ring is then slowly inflated and deflated in the process, pushing the scalp muscles up and down. But because every motion of this device involves more or less the entire scalp, results can be achieved in far less time compared to those traditional scalp massages done with your own hands. And unlike a manual scalp massage, this process is basically effortless. The device does all the heavy lifting while the user is free to go on with their daily life. The grow box, which powers the grow band, is fully automated and hands-free, and the charge lasts for hours before it needs to be recharged. So head over to hairguard.com to see some of the amazing results that guys are getting with the grow band. Okay, leave me a comment if you've got any questions at all, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.